Hello and welcome to another very special edition of the Brand Central Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Hayes. Joining us this morning, one of the movers and shakers from the west side of Atlanta, right in the shadow of the Mercedes-Benz Dome, CEO and my friend, and hardest working man on the west side, Leonard Adams. Leonard, what a pleasure to have you this this morning. Great to see you, my friend. Thank you for having me, Mark Hayes. Always a pleasure. Absolutely. So let's get right into it, Leonard. Um, You guys have $40 million worth of construction projects going right now on the west side. The weather has not been kind to you guys with all the building you've been doing, Um, but you're still moving along. Give us a quick update on the progress. A right, quick update, and you said the weather has not been nice to us. That's an understatement. Do we want the rain? Do Georgia need the rain? Yes, but it is totally uh, a hardship when that much rain comes on during construction, particularly when you're coming out of the ground. But quick update, um, as you know, we, we started these projects, and then, bam, uh, uh, the pandemic hit. And even though construction was needed in essential service, uh, those are still humans that are out there working and they were all impacted as well. Uh, we, ha- we, we did have some um, work shortages, uh, some delays due to uh, people just wrestling with how to operate in this new environment. And we couldn't think that the construction in- industry alone could just master it in a month's time or two months time. So um, for someone out there saying that there's no hiccups during construction during this COVID pandemic, I would beg to differ, right? right. But yes, yeah, so, but it seems like now, uh, now in June, things are coming back. People have understood uh, how to operate in this uh, maybe new norm um, as of right now or the new environment that we're in. And we're starting to see uh, we're gaining ground, uh, gaining time on the schedules. And we have uh, actually completed one of the phases of the projects, which was our single family home process of uh, doing seven houses over the, over the last three years. And we actually completed those uh, and we moved tenants uh, into those units that are large families that have received um, income or vouchers from Atlanta Housing. Uh, They're working with some local partners in the community. So we're very excited about the single family, which we call the West Side uh, Retention Program, a legacy home. Uh, You know, Granddaddy Mark is the new headquarters. The new headquarters is due to be finished July 30th. Uh, We are extremely excited about that building. Um, And not just because we got a new home, but what it signifies for the uh, community, the growth and the um, the, community. change that is there in the community that's coming that's also saying the history that was here so thank you for even allowing me to share about these particular projects absolutely absolutely your work for vulnerable populations um really is 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 so applauded and so appreciated on the west side and throughout the city of atlanta um tell me a little bit more about why it's 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 so important i mean obviously the numbers don't lie the unemployment rates right now um, are, are frightening, especially when you talk about vulnerable populations. I just saw one of the ex- housing experts um, doing a national interview the other day talking about we could see a homeless epidemic um, unlike anything we've ever seen before in light of the work stoppage that we've just experienced over the last couple of months. Oh my gosh. You know, it's scary to think uh of, of, of the, the comments that you just made, Mark. It's, um, I heard a statement, something even just as frightening as that. A few years back, I went to DC for a national alliance to end homelessness. And one of the uh, panelists said that homelessness could end by pretty much the generations dying off that are homeless. Uh, dying off, which is going to reduce the number of homeless people uh, drastically because you have these generations of of ages in the homeless population. And as a whole generation kind of dies off, it's going to drop the, uh, the reduce the amount of homeless. And I just thought that that cannot be the way that we're shooting for to reduce or end homelessness. No. Uh, so we talk, we think about vulnerable populations uh, and these pandemics is showing that there is a group of uh, people out here that are impacted 
in the best of times and even worse in the worst of times. And, and, and I think and I hope this pandemic has opened the eyes to people who were not connected or who just didn't see uh, this as an issue. Uh, as you stated earlier, the numbers don't lie. And these are for working people that the numbers are capturing. What about those individuals who don't work? I always say, if you didn't have a home during this pandemic, you pretty much was out there on your own to, to fish, to, to, you know, just to fend for yourself. The world asks you to stay at home. The world asks you to make your home your hospital. If you have symptoms, stay at home for 14 days. Don't come to the hospital. Stay right. home, right? Right. They ask you to work at home. They ask you to educate your kids at home. They ask you not to, you know, not to, to, to uh, use transportation to get groceries delivered to your home. So just imagine if you didn't have a home, how are you actually functioning? Uh, during this time. It's unbelievable. So Quest is looking at developing housing for such populations so that they just don't have to go through this. And uh, we hope other people buy into the health and housing model and develop affordable housing with health services provided so that vulnerable people have a place to live. Yeah. Um, and when we talk about this vulnerable population, I mean, hoping that they die off seems to be a horrible solution for me. I mean, that, like you said, there is no way that can be the answer. Obviously, we need more groups like, like yours, but, but you have to be excited about the, the, the corporations that have shared your vision and put their money where their mouth is. You know what? Uh, voice is powerful. Um, speaking your voice and just and 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 sharing your story with some people more people than not and having them finally buy into you right buy into that you're telling them the truth that you're going to demonstrate uh what you are asking of them uh and it's it's good on one hand and sad on the other one. once you land a a major supporter, it seems that the other ones kind of, I wouldn't call it follow suit, but they almost don't want to be uh, outshone by the other group. <laughs> so, so they put some money in too. Uh, hopefully that's just joshing. But yes, we've had um, sponsors um, from, you know, the Arthur M. Blake Family Foundation that is um, key to in, uh, investing on the West side to help community and economic development. We've had a strong surge of uh, support from the Equifax uh, Foundation. We're very excited about them, the Home Depot Foundation. Um, but we do pride ourselves, Mark, in government uh, sources as well. Uh, we do a lot with local government, state government, and federal government. Uh, so we do want people to know that the government is out there putting money aside and uh, 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 investing in, in uh, the ability to help vulnerable populations, but it's gonna take all of us together because the government can't do it alone, philanthropic community can't do it alone, nonprofits can't do it alone, private companies can't do it alone. We have to uh, identify some North Stars and all of us uh, target those North Stars. Right, right. And, and you know, I think, you know, as an African-American CEO, um, as much pain as we've been witnessing over the past few weeks, you know, it, it, it's almost as if this pain is needed for growth. I, I know um, in, in a position of leadership now as an African-American man, you, you must be conflicted, but also uh, uplifted by the positive changes that we're seeing and the potential of, of establishing even more corporate relationships because people saying, you know what, we, we can't keep our heads in the sand anymore. You know, we've got to get on board with companies like Quest that are moving the needle, that are changing lives. I mean, folks can go to your website and see 90% of your clients don't return to homelessness. I'll take a 90 on a test paper. You know, that lets me know that your programs work. Yes, uh, you hit the, the needle on the head or the nail on the head there, Mark. Um, you know, you turn on the news and you just cannot not see the uh, devastation that's out there. 
Uh, but if you clean your glasses a little bit, uh, as I have on my readers, um, you always can see that there is some positive uh, that's going on as well. Uh, but again, we can't swap those two um, for even Steven. You can't just swap the positive and say that the, the devastation didn't happen. We got to say the devastation happened and we got to say uh, there's some, some positive things and we got to keep demanding and demonstrating that we're going to do better. Um, as an African-American leader, um, male out here, uh, I am, I could see myself in some of the actions that have been taking place, um, some of the trauma, uh, even some of the uh, murders that have happened to people that look like me. And it hits, it hits home, Mark. I tell you, I haven't cried as much uh, or, or I've cried more now than I've had probably in my lifetime uh, over just the fight. Why do we still have to fight? so hard and so much on a constant basis. Uh, there was a slogan, I was participating in a protest, march, a peaceful, silent protest. And one of the signs that a person had, uh, one of our white counterpart brothers and sisters had, white silence is violence. Uh. White silence is violence. And um, I stopped and asked the gentleman about that. And he said, I just don't say anything. I've seen things happen. I didn't say anything. Uh, some of the stuff I just didn't know and didn't care to even think about or research it because it wasn't happening to me. Um, so we want to say, hey, the system is not just broken. It's a wrong system from the start. You can't fix this system, Mark. You got to have a new one and you're going to have to demonstrate that there's a new system being built. We are not going to put up with, oh, we fixed that one through some legislation. Uh, just mm -hmm. get out and vote. I'm all about voting. Power to the people, power to the vote. But that just alone is not going to change it. We've been voting for a long time now right. and we've still been going through the same uh, ills that we've had. Uh, in America. So let's continue to vote. Let's continue to work hard. And yes, corporations should try to identify and connect themselves to organizations on the ground that are doing work and uh, selfishly, particularly for underserved communities of colors. There's money out there. A lot of these uh, companies are making money off of these poor communities. They're spending almost all of their dollars on these products that are coming from these main corporations, and it's their due to, to, to give back. They need corporate responsibility, and we need to be able to hold them accountable for that. Absolutely. Well, Leonard, we want to thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your time this morning, and thank you for your words of wisdom, man. You are, uh, I always tell you this, and I, I marvel at this about you. You're, one of, you're the only person I know that has never worked for anyone else. You've been your <laughs> own boss for all your life, and man, I, I always tip my hat to you um, and, and your entrepreneurial spirit. But, but Leonard, you do it with passion um, to help facilitate change and, and to help other people. Have you just had a chance to take a moment to say, wow, you know, over this past 20 years here at Quest, we've touched a lot of lives. Is, is, have you had a chance to reflect because you were super busy and I know hey, you keep running, but have you, you know had what, Mark, to just realize? Thank, thank you for those comments, Mark, but I haven't. I, I almost work from a lens of I, I don't have time to really sit back and smell the roses in a sense. But I would say, because I don't do it for the money, uh, it allows me to continue. You know, I'm constantly change, chasing change for the better, for a better impact. Um, and when you're chasing that, it's, you know, it's head down, elbows, backs, right? right. Knees <laughs> high. And I'm, you know, and I, I'm trucking down that road, but, um, I am going to try to um, smell the roses as I go. Um, but yeah, I, um, I, again, if any entrepreneurs or serial entrepreneurs or social entrepreneurs that's out there watching, you know, don't make this about the money. The money will come. The money will come. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, 
and you got a good product, the money will come. But it's hard because America has made us think that money is the number one thing we should be after in this world. And it's sad to say at the end of the day, when we figure it out, it's really not the number one thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Leonard Adams, CEO of Quest Communities. Uh, you can find out more information at questcommunities.org. Leonard, always a pleasure. We wish you continued success, my friend. Thank you. Power to the people. No doubt.